fellow countrymen, countrywomen, and youths. Today, the case of former President Dr. Edgar Chagualungu, where Mr. Mijeroji Zomboy petitioned the court to come up with a dubious declaration that President Edgar Lungu was not eligible to contest the 2021 elections and therefore also not eligible to contest any future elections was expected to take off in the Constitutional Court. However, it is now public knowledge that the matter has been deferred to tomorrow, 9th July 2024. And this is because of the national mourning of Honorable Anil Silungwe. In so saying, I wish on behalf of the party to thank all those that turned up today for their support for President Edgar Lungu. I also wish to call upon all of us to turn up tomorrow for this very important court ruling. As many Zambians are aware, the matter before the court has already been dealt with by our courts on four different occasions. President Edgar Chagualungu's lawyers argued before the Constitutional Court that it is the hallmark of every reliable judicial system to remain consistent. He told the country that he had information about people who were planning subversive activities at court. We wonder why he has not gone for those individuals that he says he knows instead of curtailing the constitutional right of movement of the people and their liberty to attend court proceedings. Why is the executive jittery about this particular matter of the eligibility of President Edgar Chagualungu? What will happen to the election results of the 2021 elections in the event that the court was to find that President Edgar Lungu was not eligible to contest those elections? By the way, why again is this government so jittery? This is by far not the only high-profile matter to grace our courts. There has been other high-profile matters in the past, some actually involving former presidents, and yet the public was not restrained from attending their court proceedings. How many times, by the way, did the then leader of the then opposition UPND, Mr. Hagainde Hijilema, appear in court with a multitude of supporters outside court, singing and themselves, it doesn't have to take the executive. This is what we are referring to as interference in other institutions of government. We now start to wonder whether the executive are already aware of the ruling of the court, even before it is delivered. Are they aware? Are they fearing that people will celebrate? Or are they fearing that people will protest? Why is this jitter? Should we be made to wonder whether the judiciary is turning into what parliament has become? An institution that is operating under the whims of the executive? Is that what Jack Mumbo wants us to believe? We need answers to these questions, President Aga Inde. There is no one else who can give us answers except you. Did you instruct your minister to give us the impression that you as the executive are now also interfering with the courts? We demand of you an answer, President Aga Inde. Please clarify this. We also wish to express concern at another matter, and this is to do with all the matters surrounding the ruling delivered by the Constitutional Court regarding our nine members of Parliament. 
lest people continue to be misled, the Constitutional Court did not in any way pronounce itself on the expulsion of the nine MPs as is provided for at Article 72 of the Republican Constitution. Let me make it clear by saying the court did not nullify the seats. The court did not uphold the expulsion of those nine members of parliament. No. The courts did not make any such pronouncement. It is therefore without any legal justification to declare the seats vacant by parliament. That action is a blatant erosion of democracy and is lawlessness of the highest order. I want to emphasize that the declaration of those seats as vacant by parliament is a blatant act of erosion of democracy and is the worst form of lawlessness. This is therefore utter mischief by the Speaker of the National Assembly. We ought to remind ourselves that such an event occurred in the past. And the Speaker of the National Assembly was reminded by the Constitutional Court that Parliament has no jurisdiction over interpretation of the Constitution. And here, Article 72 is being breached at the whims of individuals. Should Zambians stand by to see their constitution being bastardized in this fashion? Let me emphasize that it is totally unconstitutional and it is actually an impeachable offense to nullify the seats of parliamentarians without following the due process of the law. No person in Zambia is above the Republican Constitution. And no institution is above the Republican Constitution. It is the duty of every Zambian to protect the Constitution. The Constitution demands of every citizen to protect it. All of you citizens are therefore called upon to stand up and rise and defend the Constitution of the Republic. Failure of which we risk bringing anarchy into this country. Let me move on to another matter. And this is a matter of concern. A matter of the statement made by President Haga Inde Ijirema at the 125 years of existence of the Reformed Church in Zambia. And by the way, on behalf of the Patriotic Front, I would like to commend and congratulate the Reformed Church in Zambia for being shepherds on behalf of Jesus Christ over the last 125 years. Yours has been a mission, and it's a continuing mission, to be the salt of the earth. And we wish you another 125 years of success. Now, Mr. Ejidema, in addressing the 125 years celebration, announced that he will be reaching out to meet Zambia's sixth Republican president, Dr. Edgar Chagwalungu. This obviously was in response to him being implored to do so by the church. He did not come as a voluntary statement. No. No. It had to come only after the church suggested to him that there is value in him meeting his predecessor. Now, many Zambians have been frustrated by Mr. Hijirema's inability to meet his predecessor over the last three years. For the church, it was an act of agency that over the last three years, 
President Hagen de Ejidema has not had the opportunity, has not given himself the opportunity to meet with his predecessor. It certainly did not have to take the clergy to request him to dialogue with his former president. No. No. It is only decency that dictates that when you assume an office that was held by somebody before you, you confer with them. It's only a matter of decency. However, as far as we know, Mr. Haga in the this pronouncement <laughs> was meant for nothing but window dressing and gallery. And we say this because we know of many other hypocritical pronouncements that Mr. Haga in the has made in the past. And this falls squarely in similar pronouncements. Now, as he confronts this, as some of our leaders have been asking, where is the $6 billion that you have borrowed over the last three years? Where has it gone? Yes, we can demonstrate where debt that was incurred in the past went to. Even debt that was incurred by President Kaunda. We can show where it went. The debt incurred by President Chiluba. We can show where it went. The debt incurred by all the previous presidents, including the debt incurred by the PF government, we can show where it went. President Hagainde, can you show us where the six billion debt has gone to? Further, there is a critical lack of money in circulation. How can you possibly grow an economy when there's no liquidity in the economy? How? People now are not capable of buying any goods because there is no money in circulation. How can you possibly expect people to invest when there is no liquidity, when there is no capital in the market? Number three, never in the history of Zambia has there been this great food insecurity where now more than 6.8 million Zambians are facing starvation. And don't blame this on the weather. No. I wish to borrow the words of Hagainde Ejidema. If a desert such as Dubai can feed its people, a desert Dubai can feed its people, what is lacking? It is not water. It is lack of leadership. Indeed, the food insecurity in Zambia is due to the poor agricultural policies of the UPND government. The poor economic analysis which led to the export of the National Strategic Maize Reserves. And give us a break. Starvation is not biblical. No, don't abuse the Bible in that fashion. Read that chapter again. Read it and read it properly. In case you don't understand it, please invite qualified clergy to come and explain it to you. The seven years of plenty was God's way of showing that when he chooses leaders, he chooses them well. And when he chooses good leaders, those leaders prepare for hard times. This is the reason why Edgar Chagwalungu made sure that there was more than 1.5 million metric tons in storage because he knew, like Joseph in the Bible, he knew that there were harder times to come. So please don't trivialize this. Don't. Seven years of plenty was followed by seven years of nothing. But because of God-chosen leadership, the people of Egypt did not starve. Here we are now. We had years of plenty. We did not care that there would be years of nothing. Instead, even what we had in reserve, we sold. We did not learn the lesson of Joseph. So to go to the people and tell them, don't complain about this because this is God. No. No. God had already given us sufficient supplies to last us another two years. 
But because of our greed, we sold the maize that God had given us. And now God is showing us that when you are led by people who are chosen by God, people rejoice. The rest I leave to you Zambians to conclude. The fourth matter affecting all Zambians is the worst load shedding experienced in Zambia. We were told there will be eight hours of load shedding. Now it is almost 24 hours of load shedding in places. And when people say we want to protest, they are stopped. Coerced, bribed, so they don't protest. How can industry thrive without power? And I want to remind all of us Zambians that President Haga Inde Hijirema again made reference to Dubai. And what did he say? If Dubai, which doesn't even have a dam, has power 24 7, and we with water, how come we have no power? What is lacking is not water, what is lacking is leadership. Indeed, what is lacking is leadership. Were we not told that when UPND forms government, they will easily build a canal from the Chambeshi River into the Kafue River so that there is enough water? Three years along the line, the Chand canal hasn't been built. Again, this is just rhetoric, lip service, promises that are not even meant to be achieved. Countrymen, country women, and youths, what about the rampant disease outbreaks? We had gotten rid of cholera. And now cholera is the order of the day in many places. Now there is even anthrax, typhoid, dysentery, and even syphilis. Syphilis which the whole world had gotten rid of. It has come back. Who has brought it? Why has it come? And why at a time like now? Countrymen, countrywomen, and youths, these crises are sitting on a bed of issues such as poverty, unemployment, lack of economic opportunities for Zambians, and rural underdevelopment. All we are hearing are these glossy statements about somebody bringing $72 billion in Zambia. Which person would come and invest 72 billion in Zambia? And this is being pronounced by an institution of governance, an economic institution of governance for that matter. And we hear about plans to give away 6 million hectares of land, a quarter of Zambia's arable land. Meanwhile, the youths are being treated to unemployment. Zambians are going without title. Zambians are going without land. And yet we're saying we're going to give some foreigner six million hectares of land on 99-year lease. What a scandal. I want to state that Mr. Hijirema has demonstrated very clearly that he lacks keenness to resolve these issues. And as a matter of fact, had he consulted with his predecessor and had he shown respect for previous governments for what they did for Zambia, he could not have caused all these challenges that Zambians are facing today. It is a virtue to honor those who were before you. And it is a virtuous person who looks back and learns from the past and not consider yourselves as the first. No. Kenneth Kaunda indeed was the first Zambian president, but he also consulted his predecessors. 
All the other presidents we have had in Zambia have consulted their predecessors. As for Edgar Chagwalungu, he consulted all the previous presidents who were alive during his presidency. And this is the reason why he succeeded in the manner that he did. Mr. Ijidema instead has been pouring scorn on all his predecessors. Each time he talks about his predecessors, he says we lacked leadership. He is the first. For the very first time we have a president in Zambia. Yes, indeed, for the very first time we have a president who has no regard for his predecessors. I would like to implore President Hagainde. At least he has another two years. If God wills, may he do better in the next two years. Anyhow, fellow countrymen, countrywomen and youths, I wish to conclude, and in concluding I wish to once again implore all of us to turn up at court tomorrow. We are turning up tomorrow because it is our right. And nobody, nobody has the right to restrain us from attending open court sessions. No one. So please come in solidarity. And this is not only in solidarity with Edgar Chagwalungu. No. It is in the protection of our Republican Constitution. It is our right. So please come. Thank you very much for your attention.